What's going on, Bay? Today, we're gonna have a look at what the most basic Webflow website is. And to do that, we're gonna create a super basic thing in replit.com here. It's an online code editor. And then we're just gonna delete stuff from the standard Webflow template until we reach a really basic website. So stay tuned, I think it's gonna be fun. Hey there, Web Bay. So replit.com, let's create a REPL and we're gonna do an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript REPL and whatever the title, Rosy Brown Oily Unit, that's me. All right, so we got our rosy brown oily unit it's building here, and it gives us a very basic index.html file here. I'm actually going to use my own that I think is just a little bit clearer, and it doesn't have all those comments in there. So let's parse through this and see what's going on. So we've got doc type HTML. Actually, I'm gonna run it so we can see over on our right here, we have our HTML being run, and on the left we have index.html, script.js, and style.css. So we've got the doc type of HTML. This is how our browser knows what to parse this as. And it's saying, hey, par parse this thing as HTML. And then we have our open HTML tag and the corresponding closing HTML tag down here, followed by opening head and closing tags. And then we also have our opening body tags. So I would call head and body siblings in this case. And then each of those have their own descendants or children as well. So head has a child called title. And that's like the, the title that shows up at the top of the web page there. And then within body, we have our header, which has an H1. We have our main, which has a paragraph tag. And we have our footer, which has our copyright. Okay, so this is HTML. A lot of people say HTML is not coding. It's just markup. It's like using Google Docs. Uh, and they may have some arguments, but I think it's coding. So we're just going to keep going with that. And on styles.css now, there's really nothing in here. But let's go ahead and drop some styles in on this thing. So we're just adding a little bit more CSS here and we're targeting elements. We're targeting all elements here. So we're targeting the body element, the header element. We're gonna give the header a background color of light blue and uh, align the text to center. We're putting 20 pixels of padding around main and we're uh, changing some colors and stuff on the footer here. So now if we run that, whoa, nothing happens. So our index.html needs to actually import this CSS. It, it doesn't know about the CSS. Now the CSS lives as a child file to this index.html file but let's go ahead and link it up using the link tag here. So link has a rel attribute, which I think stands for relationship, and that's a style sheet. And then we're going to set the href, and this is saying, hey, where is it? And you notice it even like, Replit was really good. It like gave me options here. So I'm gonna call it style.css, and then I'll close that and give it a closing slash. And now if I run, we'll see we get our CSS styles applied here. So that is really cool. Now I also want on this H1, I wanna give it a class and we'll set that equal to red heading just like that. And then let's go into our CSS and define some stuff down here. Red heading and da, 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 da. let's set the color to red. And I'm going to put a period in front of there because I want this to be a class selector. So if I run, now I've made my website even uglier by making the heading red here. Okay, let's look at some JavaScript. So let's declare a variable called heading and I'm gonna use the query selector method that exists on the document to get a reference to our H1, so just like that. Now I could also pass the class of red heading, so let's go ahead and do it that way. And then I wanna add an event listener to this, and I wanna listen, event listener takes two, two um, arguments here. It takes the event type, and then it takes a callback function of the code to execute when this certain event happens. So the event's gonna be click, and then I'm gonna use comma, and we're gonna define another function. I'll use open close parentheses, fat arrow syntax, open close brackets, press the enter key, and now this is the code that's gonna run after that click event. So let's go ahead and just do an alert, and we'll say uh, red heading was clicked. And uh, yeah, let's just do that for now. So I'll go ahead and run that. And I'm clicking the heading, but nothing's happening. And what do you think happened? Yep, we need to tell our HTML about our script. So if you're in Webflow and you always see like before the closing body tag, put your scripts in there, that's exactly what we're doing now. So script, and I'm gonna set the source equal to script.js, and we'll just go ahead and close that script tag. And now if I click run, boom, when I click the heading, I get this little alert box. This may be different depending on what browser you're on. I'm using Arc, but it says red heading was clicked. So that's pretty cool. Let's do a little more JavaScript just because I love JavaScript so much. We can get our heading and set the text content on that thing to uh, something new like, uh, I don't know, you clicked it. And let's go ahead and save and run that. And now we get our alert and it says you clicked it. So that's really cool. This is a basic website. We've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript 
all working together. Now, how does Webflow actually do this? Okay, we've got a blank page in Webflow now. There is nothing here. It's a brand new project. And the way we can think about it is this is like our HTML over here, the style manager over here. This is our CSS. So all of these are different CSS properties. And then of course we have the forgotten stepchild JavaScript that lives in the before closing body tag. Or if you're using the defer attribute, you can also put some stuff here in the head tag uh, or the async attribute. You can put anything in here really. Uh, you just wanna be careful because usually our JavaScript depends on what's in the body tag. So that's why we often put it down there. Anyways, let's go ahead and close that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag an H1 on here. And this is the heading. So we've got that. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna publish and have a look at what Webflow ships with our website. Boom, so that's published. Let's open it up. And I'm gonna open up the browser dev tools here just with the command option I. And we can see we're on the elements heading here. We've got our website. It just says this is the heading, but we're already seeing some stuff that makes sense. We have our HTML tag. And then within that, we have two siblings, the head and the body. And then those each have a bunch of crap in there too. So we can go ahead and close those up because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete stuff until I get as close as I can to what we built on Repl.it. So these are all some data attributes in the HTML tag that essentially have some meta info about our site that Webflow might use uh, in its code that it has, which we'll get to later. I'm trying to delete all this, but I can't. Anyways, we got rid of that because we don't need it. And there's some like force outline style to none here if the tab index is negative one. So this is an inline style that Webflow has. We don't need it. We don't need the character set. We really don't need the title, but I'll leave it in there. Uh, this is something about the device width, setting the scale on our viewport. Uh, don't care about that. Don't care about that. Oh, what's this, a link tag. So let's see here. This is a .css file. And you can see it's being hosted on whatever like Webflow CDN exists. But so I'm just gonna open up a new tab. I'm not going to translate this page to English. Look at this, we have a CSS file. These are all the default CSS styles. Uh, maybe it's overriding browser defaults, or maybe it's uh, some styles that are required for the slider element to work in Webflow. There's, here's the button. Uh, let's see, there's the Webflow badge. There's, these are all elements. I think there's even more. Form fail has some stuff in here. I'm sure here's file upload. There's lightbox. Um, there's these like different column and what's it called? Uh, layout classes. So Webflow has all this interesting stuff. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, the last one here is Webflow layout. Layout is display grid, sure, whatever. Um, let's go back to our website, which is right here. And so we looked at the CSS, we'll leave that in there. There's some other JavaScript thing here that's looking for touch devices. Uh, this might be required for some of the Webflow like animation JavaScript to work, I don't quite know but we just decide that we don't need it because we don't have any animations or anything like that. And this is the favicon here, let's see. So I've got a favicon. If I delete this, what happens? Does my favicon go away? It hasn't gone away yet, but I would expect that to go away. Anyways, here's the web clip, we can delete that too. All right, so now our head tag is just the title and the CSS, just like our Repl.it website. And if I come into body here, we've got our H1, this is the heading, that's important, I'm gonna leave that and follow that with a script. Now, what is this script? So I'm gonna go ahead and double click that and copy it. And I can see that jQuery is in the name. So what, lo and behold, this is the code to run jQuery. Now we're using jQuery version 3.5.1 or Webflow is, I should say. And the whole reason this is here is that JavaScript like years ago used to be pretty inconvenient to work with on the web. And you had to write a lot of boilerplate code to make some basic things happen. Well, JavaScript has improved a lot since then to the point where I would argue that we don't need jQuery but the Webflow code depends on jQuery, so it ships jQuery with the browser. Now, is that a big deal? That's kind of up for you to decide. You know, if I could have a choice, I probably wouldn't ship jQuery. You could come into the network here. I'm not gonna do that because it'll reset everything. Maybe we'll do it after this example. But just so you know, that's what Webflow is doing here. It's shipping jQuery so that its code can run. And what's next? Well, this is the Webflow code that I was just talking about, so let's open up a, uh, another tab and look at that. We see this is the Webflow front end site library. And what are we pushing here? We've got Webflow waiting for the ready function. This is all in common, so it doesn't matter, but it's all minified code. It's hard to read, but that way people can't copy it. And it also uh, transmits less over the network anytime we load a Webflow website. So we can see some stuff that we notice. I'm kind of wondering, what if I search jQuery? Yep, see, so it's looking for jQuery on the window here. So the Webflow code depends on jQuery. We can see that. What else? Um, I wonder if they're using like query selector, just some basic stuff that you see in my videos all the time. 
this is all the JavaScript that Webflow needs in order to use a tabs component or to uh, run animations or to uh, use a slider or whatever. So we got that. I think we can understand what that is now. Let's go back here. We're not actually using any dynamic components on page, so we could even delete that. Now, this what's going on right here, viewport size. If I resize my browser, you can see down here, I have a Chrome extension installed on Arc here that actually makes that. I think Arc has its own kind of size, so I should probably just uninstall this Chrome extension. But if you're wondering what this stuff is down here at the bottom too that you didn't program into your website, probably has to do with an extension. Now, this is an FPS extension I have to check how well my animations are performing. It has this ink is hidden combo class right now, and if I click that and go to styles, is hidden sets display to none. I could just go ahead and remove that. And there it is, my thing shows up, but there's no actual animations to really track. So my FPS is great right now, but I don't need this thing. We can delete that. And then I think I have the scroll bar set to none, so I can turn that off. And now we see a scroll bar over here in the top right. Okay, so by using the delete key judiciously and aggressively, we were able to create a very simple um, HTML CSS and JavaScript website, although we're not even using any JavaScript in this. Let's go back to Webflow real quick. And we're going to set this to red heading again. And we're going to change the color here to red. And we're going to publish. And we'll open this uh, updated website and we'll open up DevTools again. And you see everything has reset. So we're getting all of that mess. Like it doesn't save, right? But if we come into the head tag here and then we look at our CSS file, Let's go ahead and get out of this. And we come all the way down to the bottom. Remember the last one was like layout, layout or something. We see layout, layout, and then we also see red heading. So this is how Webflow is building our CSS file. This is the power of Webflow. It does it all in a UI for us. It's really convenient. And yeah, I think it's just good to understand how this stuff works. Now, one other thing that I did talk about, you can see the, the favicon has gone away. Uh, another thing I did talk about was in the network tab here. Let's go ahead and uh, refresh the page. And let's have a look for jQuery. This is that jQuery code. And it's 30 kilobytes. So I don't know, it took 71 milliseconds here. If I'm on a pretty fast connection, if I was on a slower connection and it took a while to load 30 kilobytes, then we could be maybe more angry with Webflow about shipping jQuery with all of our websites, as well as the Webflow JavaScript, which is here is only 14 kilobytes. It just, just so you know, that's what they're sending. They're just, they're sending a little bit extra. Um, all right, I hope that helps. I hope that helps you learn a little bit about the basics of web development. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. I'll put a video up here that I think you'll like as well. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.